This is Channel 2 News, coverage you can count on. We were up past midnight last night looking and then back up here this morning, and so it's frustrating. Emergency crews resumed their search today for a man in the Truckee River, but so far they haven't located him. The two-day rescue effort tops Channel 2 News at 6.30. Good evening, I'm Jennifer Burton. Thanks for joining us tonight. A man who either jumped or fell into the Truckee River near the Virginia Street Bridge has not been seen since around 9 o'clock last night. Officials say witnesses described hearing a splash, then seeing a man possibly in his late 60s floating downstream in the river. First responders last saw him near the Wells Avenue Bridge. Amanda Ketchlidge joins us now live from Rock Park where the search came to a close. Amanda, what's the latest? Well, Jen, searchers tell us that this most likely is a recovery effort at this point because yesterday and today's searches have been very difficult for crews to find any trace of the man in the river. We did see the individual in the river, uh, got into a fast stretch of the river and got away from anyone that could get to him. Poor visibility caused the search to be called off late Saturday night. And this morning, swimmers geared up once again in their wetsuits to float the river from Virginia Street Bridge all the way to Rock Park and Sparks. They let the current carry them into eddies alongside sandbars and other places where a body may likely be caught. The water is pretty turbid and pretty high, so with anything deeper than a foot, two feet, it, it's pretty tough to see. The recent rainfall has brought the river up, causing some issues for rescuers. With the increased flow, it stirs up the turbulence in the silt. The water conditions aren't the only factor making this search difficult. As the body fills with water face down, it can fill and submerge. And so the likelihood it's, it's going to go down and, and get stuck in the river. This time of year is the busiest for the Reno Fire Department and other agencies to respond to river rescues. That's why they encourage you to stay out of the river if you're not accustomed to it. The water is a lot colder than you think it's going to be, and it, it sucks the wind out of you really fast. It's moving a lot faster than it looks, and so you can get swept out really, really quickly. And offic officials tell us that, that they don't have an uh, identity for who the man is. And the Reno Fire Department also tells us that at this point, they have done as much as they can with this recovery effort. Of course, we're going to keep you updated with the latest. Covering the story, Amanda Ketchelich, Channel 2 News. Now, here's meteorologist Angela Schilling's first look at the Pinpoint 2 forecast. And for in Reno right now, it is quiet, just a little bit breezy, but I am watching a strong thunderstorm right now into uh, just north of Fallon, and it is moving down to the south. We don't have any warnings in place here, but certainly uh, quite a bit of lightning, and we also could be seeing a little bit of some small hail. Uh, the storm that I'm watching is just to the north of Fallon, and just if you see, uh, there's that light blue that is actually outflow from the storm, so probably the winds are kicking up there in Fallon, and that, with outflow, flow that also means that the storm is weakening, but certainly as uh, some heavy rainfall headed in your direction and then farther up to the north, just west of Lovelock, there's another stronger thunderstorm. That one is moving to the south as well. Again, no severe thunderstorm warnings are in place, but certainly quite a bit of lightning out there and some pockets of heavy rainfall and possibly even a little bit of some small hail. Now move farther north and east. That's where we are seeing more scattered activity. They do have a flood advisory in place for Elko County. And that goes through 1030 and basically that just means you could see some ponding on the roadways, which is a little bit of some minor flooding uh, for areas that uh, don't drain very well. Uh, but as far as severe chances, again, not really looking at any, but certainly quite a bit of lightning and some thunder out there. Everything is quickly uh, moving. Uh, southerly and as far as tomorrow morning though that's when the dry air will move in all of us will be dry for your Monday and temperatures will warm up as well starting off near 50 degrees so now we're talking about the warm weather of a full of your forecast coming up here in just a few minutes in Firewatch, Western Canada's devastating wildfire, nicknamed the Beast, shows no signs of slowing down as it nears a neighboring province. Alberta government officials say the Fort McMurray fire has scorched over 600 square miles and more than 500 firefighters are battling the flames. The massive wildfire has forced nearly 90,000 people to evacuate their homes. Photos from British astronaut Tim Peake on board the International Space Station show just how large the Fort McMurray fire has grown since it started a week ago. Parts of it are approaching, if not already over, the Saskatchewan border. Experts say unless the region sees significant rain, the fire will 
probably burn for months. Turning to Crime Beat, Sparks Police are searching for a suspect in a Saturday morning armed robbery. Officers responded yesterday around 5.30 a.m. to the 1300 block of Bering Boulevard. Police say the suspect entered the Jackson's food store, threatened the clerk with a gun, demanded cash, and then left the store. The clerk was not injured. The suspect is described as a white male in his 30s, about 5'5 five five to 5'8 five and 200 pounds. He was wearing a mask, a black hooded sweatshirt, khaki shorts, and black tennis shoes. Sparks Police Department is offering $1,500 for information in the case. You can contact Secret Witness. That number is 322-4900, or you can text your tip to 847-411. A CHP officer has been hospitalized after being hit by a FedEx driver in South Sacramento. The incident happened about 3.30 Saturday morning on US 50 eastbound. Officers had responded to another vehicle crash when a FedEx semi-truck collided with one of the officers and the patrol vehicle. The officer sustained major injuries and was transported to a local hospital for treatment. Police say the FedEx driver was driving under the influence at the time of the collision. The injured officer is assigned to the CHP South Sacramento area. His name has not been released. The injured officer is the third CHP patrolman in two months to be hit by a car while responding to a crash. In March, Officer Nathan Taylor died from his injuries. Today is a day to honor mothers, and so they don't have to cook, thousands of families treat mom to brunch at local casinos and restaurants. Mother's Day is one of those days that, you know, we really set aside and, and put the spotlight on mom and thank her for everything that she does for us over the years, and nothing better than to enjoy a great meal. It's one of our most popular events of the year, probably, uh, probably the most popular event, and we'll probably do around, in all the outlets today, probably around 9,000 to 10,000 people. The Atlanta says historically they do very well on Mother's Day, but today was even better than the past few years. The idea for Mother's Day came from West Virginian Anna Jarvis in 1908 to honor her own mother who had passed away. Congress made Mother's Day a national event in 1914. More people buy fresh flowers and plants for Mother's Day than any other holiday except Christmas and Hanukkah. The National Retail Federation estimates that consumers would spend $21.4 million celebrating Mother's Day this year. Still to come, Jack Sutton introduces us to a voice of the Old West as we visit KGFM, the voice of Central Nevada. That's tonight's Nevada Backroads. Next. Thanks for watching.
Welcome back. Go ahead and turn off your satellite radio and tune in to a slice of Americana when traveling Highway 95 through Central Nevada. Jack Sutton has the story of KGFM, the voice of Central Nevada, in tonight's Nevada Backroads. Keep on the sunny side, always on the sunny side. Keep on the sunny side. Nothing much else to do when passing through Esmeralda County. Turn on the radio and catch that local station. You've discovered the voice of the Old West. You're listening to KGFN in beautiful Goldfield, Nevada. Carl Brownfield is that voice this time of day. Our audience primarily is Goldfield residents, I believe of 256, and that's uh, men, women, and children. And then uh, we also have a big following on the internet, online. People come through this town, they discover this station. Radio requires a certain talent a dedication to the profession. In a town of a few hundred, you might think that's hard to come by, but in this desert town, that's not the case. But it's all nonprofit. Uh, this it's all volunteer. This whole station is volunteer. Everybody that's on the station, including myself, does it on their own time. There's the talk and some promotions. Then there's that sweet call so high. That song you love on the radio is your tune. Every show that we have on our station is done by people who had never, ever been in radio before. Keep on the sunny side, always on the sunny side. Keep on Report the sunny in Goldfield, side. Jack Sutton, Channel 2 News. And I am watching a few showers and thunderstorms uh, throughout central Nevada. We are looking at a warmer forecast though tomorrow. Of the details coming up next. You're watching Channel 2 News at 6:30 with Jennifer Burton, Dallas Kalodney on sports, and meteorologist Angela Schilling with your Pinpoint 2 forecast. Now, here's meteorologist Angela Schilling's Pinpoint 2 forecast. And today is the last day with showers and thunderstorms in the forecast for quite some time. And 
Right now we are watching a few showers and thunderstorms and they are a little bit on the stronger side. However, they are starting to weaken, not seeing as much thunder or lightning, but they are moving in from the north. We are seeing a stronger storm just north of Fallon, but it has weakened significantly even over the last 15 minutes, but certainly some heavy rain is moving into Fallon. Could possibly see a little bit of some small hail and then a stronger storm up to the north as well. Just to the southwest of Lovelock, everything is moving southerly again down to Fallon, basically around uh, 95 there. So everything is uh, moving down to the south and then also still watching some scattered showers and thunderstorms into the northeastern side of the state. No severe thunderstorm warnings in place. However, we do have a flood advisory in place through 1030 for Elko County where you could see some minor flooding, basically a little bit of some ponding on the roadways. But overall, the severe threat is basically uh, low over the next couple of hours, but certainly can rule out a few showers and thunderstorms here uh, before the sun goes down. Now into Reno today, we only picked up about three one hundredths of an inch of rainfall out at the airport. That was early this morning. Since then, though, uh, we've been able to see the sunshine and boy, did we warm up. 75 degrees was our high. Our low was 50 and we're still sitting into the 70s, currently 73 degrees and our winds are starting to pick up as well, coming out of the northwest at 10 miles per hour, but northwesterly flow is a dry flow, so that basically uh, will bring in more sunshine here over the next couple of days. This low is now pushing all the way off to the east, now into Wyoming and Colorado and the plains. The low is actually sparking off severe storms with tornadoes as well as hail and strong winds into Oklahoma and Kansas. Now we're on the back side of it. We're even starting to clear north of I-80 and will continue to clear overnight tonight into tomorrow. So as far as your future satellite and radar again over the next few hours here, still expecting some showers and thunderstorms into central and northeastern Nevada. By tomorrow, though, we will be dry and we are expecting just partly cloudy skies. Highs will be even warmer than today, even near 80 degrees. So it's going to feel nice tomorrow, just a little bit breezy. Weak little cold front moves through, though, on Tuesday and it will come through dry. So now we're training the rain for the sunshine and temperatures will be warm. Most of us into the uh, 70s for your Monday, even 77 in Lovelock, 78 in Fallon, overnight lows in the 40s. All of us will be dry, so warming a good another 4 or 5 degrees for Monday with temperatures several degrees above average. A mild start with overnight lows in the 40s and then we'll warm into the 70s. It will be a little bit breezy tomorrow. Sustained winds anywhere between 5 to 15 and gusting up to 20. Looks to be like a nice day at Tahoe, a high of 63 degrees, certainly more sunshine than today and a dry forecast and Reno for your Monday a high of 77 degrees. So tomorrow does look to be comfortable just a little bit on the breezy side. Warmest days uh, will be Thursday and Friday with highs into the 80s. Overnight lows will be into the 40s. Thank you for that lovely forecast. I know I did it just for you, Jen. <laughs> I know you like the sunshine. I'm excited to see this. Yeah, it will be a nice change. <laughs> Thanks, Angela. <laughs> Coming up in sports, the NBA playoffs continue today. Dallas will have those highlights and much more next.
Eck, I've noticed, yeah. For TV purposes, he, uh... Now, here's Dallas Kolodny with Channel 2 Sports. The NBA playoffs continue today as LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers are one win away from sweeping the Atlanta Hawks and punching their ticket to the Eastern Conference Finals. But the Hawks didn't go down without a fight, so let's head to ATL for this one. Fourth quarter and the Hawks down one. Al Horford, the Atlanta big man from downtown, buries the three. Hawks by two, but less than a minute to go. Cleveland back up one. LeBron James, the jab step, jumper, knocks down to Cleveland by three. Now final seconds, back to a one-point game. Atlanta's Dennis Schroeder trying to save their season on the drive. Gets tied up. They call a jump ball. Atlanta doesn't get another chance. Cleveland advances and wins 100 to 99. To the ice, Tampa Bay was on the verge of advancing as well as they hosted the Islanders. They left nothing to chance. First period, no score. Victor Hedman cleans up the garbage, fires it into the net, one nothing Tampa Bay. Later on the first period, Alex Kilhorn lights the lamps and the lightning flank the Islanders, four nothing as they advance to the Eastern Conference Finals. Well, the Nevada softball team was finally able to take the field today in nearly two weeks, the first time in nearly two weeks. Why so long in between? Well, they had five straight games that either rained or snowed out. No easing back into it, though. They hosted number 20 Fresno State in a doubleheader on senior day. Nevada dropped game one, seven to three. Let's pick up the action in game two. Hannah Eisenberg, she was in the circle for the Wolf Pack. No score, second inning. Eisenberg gets the Fresno State batter to go down looking, but there were two on for Fresno State. And next, batter Eisenberg's offering gets taken deep to center field clears the wall and the Wolfpack not able to make a comeback in this one they get swept for the day 10 to 6. As for Nevada baseball team they were able to sweep San Jose State this weekend that is the Wolfpack's eighth straight victory improves their record to 27 and 20 16 and 8 in conference they're hitting their stride at the right time next up for them a one game series of San Francisco on Tuesday at the Coley. Meanwhile, I can only assume the wet weather that we have had here migrated over the Salt Lake because the Aces and Bees game has been postponed due to severe weather. They will play a doubleheader tomorrow. The first pitch set for 4 p.m. Game 2, beginning 30 minutes after the conclusion of Game 1. Cute baby alert. Rockies and Giants. No score in the first. Runner on from Nolan Arenado. Rockets won over into Triples Alley. That'll score Trevor Story on, of course, the triple. Rockies take a 1-0 lead. They'd add a run later. Bottom of the ninth, Giants down to their last two outs. Reed Hylum, Jake McGee gets Brandon Crawford to ground into the 4-6-3 double play. That ends the ball game. Rockies win it 2-0. A's and O's, a little Mother's Day catch before the game. Always like to see that. For the Athletics, the game got started real well. Top first, 2 nothing already. Yonder Alonzo lines on the left. That scores Josh Reddick. Danny Valencia, he gets waved home from first. And immediately regrets that decision. Tagged out easily at home. All downhill for Oakland from there. 3-2 game. Pedro Alvarez says, but, and bye to that one. Sails way out to right. Game tied at three. Very next batter, same song, second course. Jonathan Shoup. Lifts one up and out to left. The Orioles get the win in this one by eight runs, 11 to three. Final round of the Wells Fargo Championship in Charlotte. James Hahn on the seventh hole, putting for Eagle from Egypt. Moments ago, and this one, wait for it. The dance floor, wait for it. Five in two. Goes to its home. I'm even early on. It's waiting so long. It's still going. There it is. I, that was a spoiler alert on my part. He made the eagle putt. 
Who's in the clubhouse with Lee Roberto Castro, though, knocks in the par putt on 18. We go to the playoffs. So First playoff hole, Castro blasts out of three. trouble and in the more trouble. His approach shot is into the gallery. The ball lands in a man's shoe, which is very impressive. Doesn't really help your scorecard, though. He would bogey and Han would not. He would par. And after missing the cut in his last eight tournaments, Jen, he wins the Wells Fargo Championship, his second ever PGA tournament. Why is somebody not wearing shoes? That's what I was just going to ask you. Yeah, I don't know. But that's There's a guy that's barefoot walking it's around the barefoot. golf course. barefoot. He could put, I mean, I, I, no, I'm just going to leave it there. Well, you know you're supposed to be quiet. Maybe it yeah. is more quiet. All right. Sure. Thanks, Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> after the break, Powerball is back, and someone is more than $400 million richer. We'll have the latest on that jackpot. And then Angela will have a final look at our weather. You're watching Channel 2 News. Coverage you can count on. Someone in New Jersey woke up a multi-millionaire today. One ticket matched all six numbers in Saturday night's Powerball drawing. The numbers are 5, 25, 26, 44, and 66, and a Powerball number of 9. Now, that jackpot grew from $415 million to an estimated $429 million at the time of the drawing, the biggest since the massive $1.6 billion jackpot in January. The winner can either take a one-time payment of more than $280 million or choose installments spread out over 30 years. I know numbers. you didn't win. Yeah. Those are my numbers if I would played yesterday. Just or not yesterday, like a week missed ago. it by that much. Oh. <laughs> Too late. I know. Oh. Uh, over the next couple of hours, though, we'll have to watch showers some thunderstorms into central Nevada. Just adds up. Okay. Thanks for joining us. See you at 11 tonight. Good night.